Good morning, Blaze Church again. If you do not know me, my name is Joe, and I'm excited to be continuing our series at the movies, Pixar edition. And like I said earlier in this series, we're discovering God's truth for our lives by not only looking at his word, but beloved Pixar films. And I'm happy to be bringing a connection with God's word and the emotional roller coaster of a film called Inside Out. Has anyone seen Inside Out? Oh, good. We have a lot of good hands. It's I can't believe we're almost at its 10-year anniversary anniversary, and its second one just came out. I mean, but if you haven't seen it before, Inside Out is this animated movie that explores the inner workings of an 11-year-old girl named Riley. And it's through her personified emotions, joy, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust. These emotions operate from a control center in Riley's mind, influencing her reactions and behaviors as she navigates a significant change in her life. Riley just moved to a new city, away from her friends, away from her hometown where she's grown up to up until this point. And we'll see in her story how her emotions interact and sometimes conflict with each other, but ultimately they demonstrate the importance of using all of Riley's emotions to maintain her well-being. And while I've seen this movie in kind of bits and pieces while it's been on the TV for my daughter, I sat down to prepare for today's message. I sat down by myself and I watched it for the first time straight through as an adult, really trying to pick up on things. And I couldn't believe how relevant this movie felt for me as an adult, this kid's film from Pixar. Because much like this character or emotion joy that's in Riley's head, I used to think that I needed to be in a state of joy and happiness at all times. That if, if I wasn't, something was really wrong. So I got really, really good at taking all those other emotions, sadness, anger, disgust, worry, and stuffing them deep, deep down within me and keeping that outward appearance like nothing, nothing was wrong. But of course, as I grew up, as I got older, I could see how detrimental that strategy was for myself and my relationships. Those emotions just don't magically go away even if you aren't acknowledging them. And maybe you can relate to a time where you thought that suppressing or bottling up a certain emotion was the route to go. Maybe a time where a friend hurt your feelings and instead of communicating how you felt, those stuffed down emotions led to deep resentment. Or maybe you're in a time or had a time of high stress at work or school or college, but you decided to keep those emotions at bay and then people are wondering why you're so on edge and snapping on them and having these anger outbursts. Or maybe you're going through a time of grief and instead of expressing that grief in a healthy way to cope, it's led to prolonged suffering. Studies shown that suppressing feelings can have various negative consequences. When I was doing my research, these studies said that the suppression of the emotions could lead to more stress, anxiety, depression, lack of authentic connection, rage, and poor decision making. But the good news this morning is that it doesn't have to be that way. God's word says that these emotions should all be felt. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 starting in verse 1 it says there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens a time to weep a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance and these emotions shouldn't just be felt but the bible says we're called to bring these emotions to both god and those around us Psalm 62, 8 says, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. And in Romans 12, 15, it says, Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. So God created us with this spectrum of emotions, each serving a purpose in our lives. 
And we're going to see that just as Riley's emotions worked together in the movie Inside Out, we too should acknowledge and embrace all of our feelings to experience an emotional balance and wholeness, which will help us connect to God and to others. So let's dive deep into God's word and inside out. So in the beginning of the movie, we see the emotion joy in Riley's head. And she has this desire naturally for constant happiness for Riley, constant joyful memories. And Joy is proud that most of Riley's memories are happy memories. Joy thinks lesser of the other emotions. She feels like she's kind of the leader of the, of the emotional ship um, and wants Riley to be happy at all times. But it's an unsustainable expectation. So let's take a look at this first clip from Inside Out. So if you heard, Joy says, another perfect day. Um, if it only were that simple. Uh, maybe it feels that way when you're a kid growing up, but as you get older, life becomes complex. Um, and the Bible is chock full of examples to back up that statement. Um, and maybe you don't know this because you're new to the Christian faith, or maybe you've forgotten it, but when Jesus was here on earth, while he was fully man and fully God, Jesus felt a wide range of emotions. His days were filled with conflict, compassion, temptation, love, sadness, and even anger. And you might be saying, Jesus? Really? Jesus felt all that? Yes. And while he led this perfect life on earth to ultimately die for our sins and our imperfect lives, that doesn't mean that perfection equals pure joy. And I don't have time to read every single scripture showing these wide-ranging emotions Jesus felt, but I'll just recall a few. In Matthew 9, Jesus felt compassion for the helpless and harassed. In John 11, Jesus wept when his friend Lazarus died. In John chapter 2, Jesus felt anger at the people who were turning the temple into a marketplace for financial gain. In John 13, Jesus loved those who carried the message of the gospel while he was here on earth. And in Matthew 27, Jesus felt loneliness as he hung on the cross, forsaken by all and punished for sins he never committed. God created our emotions. And we read in Genesis 127, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. You're not an accident. You don't have to find yourself or find an identity. God made you in his image. And that includes all of your emotions. Jesus showed us the image of God while he was here on earth, and he did not bury a single emotion. So be encouraged this morning that God made you, and he knows you. And while I was preparing and thinking through this, I, I think that one aspect in our current kind of life is like social media can really fan the flame of this thought process of we need to be happy and joyful. You know, the posts are all very well manicured, curated to be kind of the happiest times of our lives. But we don't see in those social posts the brokenness behind the scenes, the anger, the betrayal in others' lives. Another, uh, another example that I think we can point to is that I feel like sometimes if you're in the Christian faith, you can cling on to a single scripture to try to be happy all the time. How many coffee mugs and tapestries do you think have the following scripture from Nehemiah 8.10? For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, don't get me wrong. The scripture is absolutely 100% true. But this scripture also doesn't exist in a bubble. 
It exists in the same Bible that showed Jesus telling his disciples this in Matthew, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. You see, it's not either or, it's both and. It's okay to feel sad sometimes, angry sometimes, afraid. These emotions are part of the human experience. We need to acknowledge them and learn healthy ways to express them because God created them. But should we feel joy? Of course. We should feel these other emotions as well. But as a child of God, there is a depth of joy that we know that doesn't exist for others who do not know God the Father. There is a Christian joy that is unique. James tells us in the midst of trials and suffering, we count it all as joy. Paul writes that one of the fruit of the Spirit given to us is joy. And Jesus himself promised joy in John 15, 11. He said, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. As followers of Jesus, we don't have to manufacture the feeling of joy. We don't have to suppress our other feelings either. We have a full joy that is possible because of Jesus. And as I said, it's not this either or, it is both and. This means that when the world has no reason for joy, children of God do have a reason for joy. It's an incredible promise this morning. So Riley, in Inside Out, her core memories are all joyful, but they're starting to be challenged. Riley is in this new, unfamiliar city, and joy is not the primary emotion she's feeling. And when her joy is lost, she starts to see these other emotions come out of her. But instead of accepting all of them, she suppresses her sadness. She suppresses her joy, and they get literally kicked out of the command center of her mind. Let's take a look at the next clip. So life's challenges and transitions can lead to this emotional upheaval and loss. Riley's move to the new city has triggered a literal loss of joy and a sense of confusion. But maybe this is something you can relate to right now in your life. Maybe you've been laid off from your job and, and don't know what's coming next. Or you've been hurt by someone you trusted and the betrayal feels overwhelming. Or maybe you're just in a transition, a crossroad in your life and you have no feeling of which direction you wanna pursue. I know I can relate to Riley here because there's been times in my life where I've decided to kind of stew in my suppressed emotions. Um, and it's led me down a path, path where it's just, I'm not a fun person to be around because I wasn't acknowledging the situation. When we feel lost or broken, the Bible says God is there to comfort and guide us. We can turn to him in prayer and also seek support from our community. Psalms 34, 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Not only is it okay to have these emotions, but God is close to your brokenness. So close that he sees all your brokenness and there's nothing that you could do or have done to scare him off. His love for you is greater than any sin or any struggle that you're going through. And we know this because of the amazing grace that God has given us through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. Jesus did not deserve the brutal beating and killing he received. And yet Jesus went through this painful and violent way of dying to show us a love unlike anything else, to take away the sins 
of our lives so that we can know God on a deeper, more connected level. A level where we can talk to God when we're happy, sad, and everything in between. And as we aspire to be more like Christ, we use his love to help others who are in need. 2 Corinthians 1, starting in verse 3, it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any troubles with the comfort we ourselves received from God. And this can look like many different ways, practically. It could be you supporting somebody. It could be being supported by a friend. It could be praying for the salvation of a family member. It's even, as Christians, in the form of correcting another, another believer who may have lost their way. Galatians 6.1 says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. We are called to support each other's emotions, listening and providing a gospel path for someone who knows God to walk on. Another way that this could look like is seeking professional counseling alongside your walk with Jesus. Proverbs eleven fourteen says, Where there is no counsel, the people fail, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. There is safety that can come from sharing our struggles and seeking support from others. Now, counseling may not be for everyone, but I've personally found that it has helped me a great deal to better understand my emotions and be more aware of them, to understand why I am feeling a certain way and then how to best express those feelings to others around me to have better conversations surrounding those feelings and also to better support my own friends and family. Another great option is getting into a small group here at Blaze. They'll be starting back up after the summer and they provide us a great opportunity to both hear others share their stories of God's grace and comfort in their lives, but also an opportunity for you to find connection with other believers and help and get help from each other like Jesus would have helped while he was on earth. Galatians 6, 2 says, carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. This past spring, we had 90 different people attend a small group at Blaze Church. That is incredible. You can give it up for that. So I encourage you to take a look at the, the Blaze Church page when it launches. Get prepared. Pre-decide what you think you're going to do. It's another amazing way to draw closer to God. So to recap so far, we are made in God's image. God has given us this full spectrum of, emo of emotions to embrace. God is close to us. He comforts us, and we can seek him in prayer. And God gave us salvation through his son, Jesus, and through the sacrifice that he made so that we can help others around us and be helped in our time of need. So at this point, you may be thinking two questions. Well, first, what happened to Riley? What's happened in Inside Out? But second, what are some practical ways and takeaways that we can apply to our lives right after we leave this space this morning? Well, Riley's other emotions have taken control. Um, and they come with this harebrained scheme to tell Riley to go run away from her parents, travel back to her hometown because in her hometown she was happy so their logic was if you go back to your hometown you can create more joyful memories and that somehow might bring joy back in your life but <laughs> joy who's trying to get back to riley's mind realizes after many failed attempts that joy herself cannot hold everything together and that sadness and other emotions are needed and are essential in order to produce more joy 
and other emotions in Riley's life. So this realization leads Joy to get back to headquarters just in time to convince Riley to get off of that bus back home, go back to her parents, and express how she's truly, really feeling all of her emotions. So let's take a look at this last clip from Inside Out. So Joy realizes that sadness is essential in helping Riley process her grief and to connect with her parents. Our emotions work together to shape our experiences and relationships. Something like sadness allows us to grieve, to heal, and to connect with others and God on a deeper level. 1 Peter 3.8 says, Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. So how can we put this into practice? What are just some practical takeaways that we can start to implement right away? Well, I tried to simplify this into three different things. Three different things that we can do when we're feeling a certain emotion. The first is to listen. Take time to pause, listen, and acknowledge how yourself or others are feeling. It's crucial to understand the root cause of the emotion, why you're feeling it. The next is to list. Write down your feelings in a journal, or if you don't want to do that, share them with a trusted friend, a trusted family member or counselor. Once you've identified what's causing your emotion, listing it out helps you become aware and manage them effectively. And the last step is to lay it down. Bring your feelings in Jesus in prayer. Lay it down at his feet. Now, this isn't just about laying it down and walking away and ignoring it. It's not about that. It's not about pretending to find happiness. It's about seeking God, seeking his comfort in those times where you're having other emotions. Scripture assures us that God will draw near to us when we do. In fact, going back to Jesus' time on earth, we see him do these very things with the emotion grief. On the night before he dies on the cross, he brings his small group of disciples to the garden and he shares in Matthew 26, six, starting in 38. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Can you stay here and keep watch with me? So what is he doing there? He's listening to his emotion, and he's listing it out, what he's feeling in that moment to others. And then he lays it down. He brings it to God in Matthew 26, 39. Going a little further, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. He surrenders it all to the father. And I don't know about you, if Jesus did it, I know it's personally worth doing. The God who made you in his image wants you to bring it all to him. The joyous moments of celebration, the angry moments and situations, the fear you might have about the future, bring it all to God. James 4, 8 says, come near to God and he will come near to you. It's a promise. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. What if this morning you embraced all of your emotions, even the difficult ones? These emotions, they're not your enemy. They're part of who you are. They're part of how God designed you. And when you allow to feel 
and you bring these emotions to God, he will bring you closer to him and to others. Psalm 148, 18 says, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. God created us with this spectrum of emotions, each serving a purpose. And just as Riley's emotions eventually worked together, we too can acknowledge ours. We can embrace them. And we can experience that connection and closeness with God and to others. But I recognize today you might feel like how Riley was when she moved. No, happy, oh, no happiness in sight. Don't want to feel sad. Suppressing other things. Not knowing what to do about it. And if that's you this morning, I'd love to pray for you. Father God, thank you, Lord. You know us, Lord. You know what is going on inside of us, Lord. There was no one else better to come to. You designed us. We are created in your image, Father. Lord, I pray for those in this room right now who are feeling lost, who haven't felt joy, who are feeling these other emotions within them, Lord, that you comfort them, that your Holy Spirit provides a sense of comfort, that they know that they can come to you no matter what, that there is nothing, there's nothing too bad that they could have done. You love us. You've sent your son to die for us. Your grace is incredible, Jesus. We just pray that you soften our hearts, that you allow us to find and seek you, Lord, that you just comfort us when we are feeling these other emotions, God. In Jesus' name, amen. And we can draw near to God because of Jesus. And that is the truth. It's because of what Jesus did that we have this opportunity. John 1.14 says, The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory, like Father, like Son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Jesus willingly stepped down from heaven. He moved into the neighborhood. He came down and he forgave our sins so that we can know the one who made us, the one who made us in his image. Sin blurred that image, but Jesus paid the price to remove sin. So if you do not know Jesus this morning, I wanna invite you to call on Jesus call on him to forgive your sins. Start a new life with Jesus today. If that's you this morning, just as a sign of saying, I'm ready, God, just slip up your hand. Say, I'm ready to surrender to Jesus. I want to pray for you this morning. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you that we know that we are forgiven because of what your son Jesus did on the cross. I pray for those who are ready to surrender it all, who are ready to say, I can't do this on my own. I need to surrender it to the, the one God, Lord, to Jesus who died for our sins. Lord, I pray for those who are accepting Jesus today, who are saying, I am ready, so that they start their walk, their journey, knowing you more, knowing your son, learning about him, knowing that they are loved and comforted. In Jesus' name, amen.